People who are on the carnivore diet who I see as patients, they get two benefits from it. So the first benefit is that inherent within some diets, there are certain chemicals and proteins that people react adversely to. And it's simply a matter of removing those chemicals from the diet. So that could be something called lectins, which is a certain kind of protein. They could be phytates or tannins or oxalates. And there's a whole laundry list of things that some people can react to. But I guess the question that most of your listeners will be interested in is, what about the nutrients? Haven't we been told that we need to eat vegetables for the nutrients? Well, the fact is, vegetables, on average, are less nutrient dense than animal foods. They, they just don't contain as much nutrients. So for example, if you were on a purely vegan diet eating only vegetables without supplementing, you would end up getting very, very sick due to deficiencies like B12 deficiency. So I would ask, is a diet that you have to supplement on to stay healthy, to stay alive, is that really nutritionally optimal and do we see this with people on carnivore diets we don't actually see people most patients I see who are on the carnivore diet actually don't supplement at all and when I look at their results we don't see evidence of nutrient deficiency now the most common one that people will cite is vitamin C um, they say oh but you must have some fruits and vegetables because you'll like vitamin C well vitamin C is very interesting so first of all molecularly it's very, very similar to glucose. So when you ingest vitamin C, it's actually competing with glucose to get into the cells of your body. So people on carnivore diets who aren't consuming the glucose in the first place, they actually absorb more of the vitamin C. And what a lot of people don't realise is that animal foods, including meat, contain vitamin C. And this has been known historically for a long, long time. So one of, uh, in the Napoleonic uh, era, uh, one of Napoleon's armies uh, in Egypt, they used to use horse meat from horses that were killed in battle to cure scurvy. It's been well known. Antarctic explorers, they well knew that if they consumed penguins, then that would prevent scurvy. So this has been known, this is not new science. It's just not well known. We've got a we, we know that if we actually do an analysis of meat, we actually do see it contains vitamin C in necessary amounts. And this is another area where science has been poorly done and poorly communicated. If you go and look at a table of the nutritional quality of meat, you might often see that it says vitamin C zero, but it will often have an asterisk. And when you look at that asterisk, you'll go down and in fine print, you'll see assumed value, not actually tested. So it's this mistaken belief that meat mustn't have vitamin C that led to a lot of scientists not even actually bothering to test for it. So the simple fact is that we can get all the nutrients we require from animal foods. If we take eggs, for instance, they and nature's multivitamin. Contained within each yolk is all the nutrients required to support life, to support a living organism. You can't say that about a single vegetable. And if we actually have a look at some of the science, there was a study that was done in Ecuador, it was published in 2017, and they actually found that as a randomised controlled intervention, by giving infants just one egg a day, they were able to reduce the incidence of underweight children by 74%. So animal foods are incredibly nutritious, especially when it comes to plant foods. We know that plant foods, for all intents and purposes, are deficient in nutrients.